Venus and Earth were born as twins same size, same rocky composition orbiting the same star, but while Earth became a blue paradise teeming with life, Venus transformed into a 900-degree hellscape where it literally rained sulfuric acid and the atmospheric pressure could crush a submarine. The Soviet Union spent 25 years and launched 16 missions to uncover what went so catastrophically wrong on our planetary twin. But here's the shocking part. Soviet scientists may have discovered that Venus wasn't always a hell world. Did you know that Venus might have had oceans for 2 billion years before becoming the inferno we see today? The Soviet obsession begins. While America dreamed of the moon, the Soviet Union set its sights on something far more mysterious. Venus, our planet's twin wrapped in sulfuric acid clouds. In 1961, just as Yuri Gagarin orbited Earth, Soviet scientists were already plotting humanity's first interplanetary conquest. But Venus wasn't just another space race prize, it was personal. Chief designer Sergei Korolev believed Venus held secrets that could revolutionize our understanding of planetary evolution. The Cold War wasn't just about nuclear missiles anymore, it was about who could touch another world first. The obsession began with a simple question, what lay beneath those impenetrable clouds? Early Soviet astronomers theorized Venus might harbor life, perhaps even advanced civilizations hidden beneath its mysterious atmosphere. This wasn't science fiction, this was serious Soviet space policy. Korolev's design bureau started developing the Venera program in 1960, dedicating massive resources to cracking Venus's secrets. Unlike the Americans who focused on lunar missions, the Soviets chose the harder target. Venus was closer sometimes, but its hostile environment made it infinitely more challenging. The Soviet Academy of Sciences committed to not just flying by Venus but actually landing on its surface, something no nation had ever attempted on any planet. This ambitious goal would define Soviet space exploration for the next three decades. Early Failures and Determination Seven failures in a row would crush most space programs, but the Soviet Union treated each disaster as a stepping stone to Venus. Between 1961 and 1965, every single Venera mission ended in catastrophe. Rockets exploded, spacecraft went silent, and communication systems failed millions of miles from Earth. Venera 1 launched on February 12, 1961, only to lose contact seven days later, drifting helplessly through space like a cosmic ghost. The engineers at OKB-1 worked around the clock rebuilding, redesigning and refusing to surrender. Sergei Korolev faced mounting pressure from the Politburo to abandon Venus and focus on lunar missions like the Americans. But the chief designer had a vision that went beyond political victories. He wanted to prove Soviet technology could conquer the most hostile environment in the solar system. Each failure taught them something crucial. Venera 2 and Venera 3 in 1965 both lost communication during their 106-day journey, but they confirmed that Soviet spacecraft could survive the brutal voyage to Venus. The real breakthrough came from analyzing what went wrong. Overheating electronics, communication blackouts and navigation errors weren't just technical problems, they were puzzles to solve. Venera 3 actually crash-landed on Venus on March 1, 1966, making it the first human-made object to reach another planet's surface, even though it was already dead on arrival. This successful failure energized the entire program and proved that reaching Venus wasn't impossible, it just required Soviet stubbornness and engineering brilliance. First Atmospheric Success The moment came when Soviet engineers broke through Venus's shrouded veil. Venera 4 didn't just fly past, it plunged right into the planet's atmosphere and spoke back. Launched on October 18, 1967, this daring probe braved blistering heat, crushing pressure, and corrosive clouds for nearly an hour of live data transmission. As Venera 4 descended, its suite of sensors measured temperature, pressure and chemical composition, revealing a dense carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere with layers of nitrogen and traces of oxygen that shattered prevailing theories of a lush, life-friendly world. Back in Moscow, the room fell silent as telemetry streamed in. Surface pressure hovered around 22 atmospheres, and temperatures soared near 530 degrees Celsius, confirming that Venus was a hellscape rather than a habitable twin. Chief designer Vasily Mishin and his team pored over every kilobyte of data, realizing they had to overhaul heat shielding and instrument cooling for future landers. Yet the true victory wasn't just data. It was proof that Soviet hardware could endure Venus's brutal descent long enough to send home critical science. 
This atmospheric triumph re-energized the Venera program, validating years of trial, error, and unwavering resolve. The next missions would build on Venera 4's lessons, improving electronics insulation and parachute design to survive even longer. For the first time, humanity saw Venus through Soviet eyes, not as a mythical Eden, but as a ruthless world demanding respect. And with that revelation, the race to conquer Venus transformed from hopeful fantasy into an engineering odyssey. Landing on Venus Well the impossible became reality when metal finally met molten rock on another world. Venera 7 achieved humanity's very first successful planetary landing on December 15, 1970, transmitting from Venus's surface for 23 precious minutes before the hellish environment claimed yet another Soviet probe. This wasn't just a landing, it was a declaration that Soviet engineering could, you know, conquer the most hostile planet in our solar system. The spacecraft endured crushing 90 atmosphere pressure and surface temperatures of 475 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, while sending back temperature and pressure readings that, honestly, rewrote planetary science textbooks. Chief designer Georgi Babakin and his team had to redesign everything after Venera 4's atmospheric success. They strengthened the heat shield, improved the cooling systems, and created a spherical landing capsule that could survive impact velocities of 17 meters per second. The Soviet Academy of Sciences held its breath as weak signals trickled back from the surface, proof that a human-made object was, against all odds, functioning on another planet's hostile ground. But Venera 7 was just the beginning of Soviet surface domination. The mission validated critical technologies for future landers, and proved that Venus's surface conditions, while extreme, weren't insurmountable barriers to exploration. Venera 8 followed in 1972, lasting 50 minutes on the surface and measuring light levels, confirming that photography might actually be possible despite the thick atmospheric shroud. These groundbreaking landings established the Soviet Union as the undisputed master of Venus exploration, setting the stage for even more ambitious missions that would soon capture the first images from another world's surface. First Images from Another World History was truly shattered when grainy black and white pixels revealed the alien landscape of Venus. Venera 9 didn't just land successfully on October 22, 1975, it became humanity's first photographer on another planet, transmitting images that absolutely stunned scientists worldwide. The panoramic view showed a rocky, boulder-strewn surface, illuminated by an eerie orange glow filtering through Venus's dense atmosphere, proving that despite the hellish conditions, the surface was surprisingly well-lit and, wow, geologically active. Chief designer Georgi Babakin's team had achieved the impossible by designing cameras that could survive 462 degrees Celsius temperatures and 90 atmosphere pressure for over 53 minutes. The images revealed flat rocks scattered across the landing site, suggesting recent volcanic activity and, you know, challenging theories about Venus being a completely molten world. Venera 10 landed just three days later on October 25th, capturing additional surface photographs from a different location, showing a more mountainous terrain with older, weathered rocks. These groundbreaking images transformed Venus from an abstract scientific target into a real, tangible world that humans could actually see. The Soviet Academy of Sciences released the photographs globally, marking the first time any nation had successfully photographed another planet's surface. Both landers operated far beyond their designed lifespans, with Venera 9 transmitting for 53 minutes and Venera 10 lasting 65 minutes on the surface. The success of these photographic missions established the Soviet Union as the undisputed leader in planetary surface exploration, proving that even the most hostile environments couldn't stop human ingenuity and Soviet determination. The Pinnacle Missions Soviet ambition reached, well, unprecedented heights when Venera 13 and Venera 14 landed within four days of each other in March 1982, delivering the most spectacular achievement in planetary exploration, the first color photographs and sound recordings from another world surface. These twin missions represented the absolute peak of Soviet Venus mastery, with each lander surviving over two hours in conditions that would, honestly, instantly vaporize any unprotected human. Venera 13 touched down on March 1, 1982 followed by Venera 14 on March 5, creating an unprecedented dual mission that, you know, revolutionized our understanding of Venus, the color images stunned the world, revealing a rust-colored landscape under an amber sky, 
with flat volcanic rocks and fine-grained soil stretching to the horizon. But the real breakthrough came from Venera 13's microphone, which captured the actual sounds of Venus, wind howling through the dense atmosphere, and the mechanical operations of the lander itself. These were humanity's first audio recordings from another planet, transforming Venus from a silent, distant world into a place where you could literally hear the alien environment. Both missions conducted advanced soil analysis using X-ray fluorescence spectrometers, revealing that Venus's surface composition resembled Earth's oceanic basalt, suggesting similar geological processes despite radically different evolutionary paths. Venera 13 operated for 127 minutes while Venera 14 functioned for 57 minutes, both far exceeding their designed lifespans. These pinnacle missions marked the golden age of Soviet planetary exploration, proving that with enough determination and engineering excellence, humans could not just visit other worlds, they could see, hear, and analyze them in extraordinary detail. Balloon Missions and Program End The final act of Soviet Venus dominance came not from the surface, but from floating through the planet's hellish atmosphere. Vega 1 and Vega 2 released revolutionary weather balloons in June 1985, creating the first and only atmospheric observatories to drift through another planet's skies. These innovative missions, you know, represented a completely different approach to Venus exploration, as the Soviet Academy of Sciences realized that long-term atmospheric monitoring could reveal secrets impossible to detect from brief surface landings. Each Vega balloon floated at 54 kilometers altitude for 46 hours, carried by Venus's fierce 100 meter per second winds while transmitting atmospheric data and tracking the planet's mysterious circulation patterns. The balloons revealed that Venus's middle atmosphere was far more dynamic than expected, with powerful convection currents and chemical reactions creating a constantly shifting environment. Chief designer Vyacheslav Kovtunenko had designed these balloons to survive pressures 75 times greater than Earth's surface, while maintaining radio contact across millions of miles. But even as the Vega missions achieved this atmospheric triumph, the Soviet Venus program was quietly ending. Economic pressures, the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and shifting political priorities under Mikhail Gorbachev forced the cancellation of future Venus missions. The Venera program officially concluded after Vega 2 completed its dual mission to Halley's Comet in March 1986. After 25 years of relentless innovation and 16 successful missions, the Soviets had conquered Venus completely, landing on its surface, photographing its landscapes, recording its sounds and even floating through its atmosphere. No other nation has matched this planetary exploration legacy. American and Japanese Missions While the Soviet Union dominated Venus for decades, other nations finally entered the game with radically different approaches. NASA's Magellan arrived in 1990, armed with revolutionary radar technology that stripped away Venus's cloud cover and revealed the planet's hidden surface in unprecedented detail. This wasn't just another space mission, it was a complete reimagining of how to explore Venus. Instead of crash landing probes for brief surface glimpses, Magellan spent four years in orbit, methodically mapping 98% of Venus's surface using synthetic aperture radar that penetrated the dense atmosphere like X-rays through fog. The American approach revealed massive volcanic features, impact craters, and tectonic activity that Soviet surface missions had only hinted at. Magellan's radar maps showed that Venus was geologically young, with most of its surface less than 800 million years old, suggesting catastrophic planetary resurfacing events that completely transformed the world. Japan's Akatsuki mission launched in 2010, focusing on atmospheric dynamics and climate evolution using infrared cameras and radio science. These orbital missions complemented rather than competed with Soviet achievements, proving that Venus exploration required multiple strategies. While the Soviets mastered surface operations and atmospheric probes, American and Japanese missions excelled at global mapping and long-term atmospheric monitoring. Akatsuki discovered mysterious atmospheric gravity waves and confirmed that Venus's rotation is actually slowing down, adding new mysteries to the planet's already complex story. Together, these international efforts created the most complete picture of Venus ever assembled, building on the foundation that Soviet engineers had courageously established decades earlier. Mysterious Discoveries Strange signals and unexplained phenomena have haunted Venus exploration since the very first missions. 
But the most intriguing mystery emerged when Soviet scientists detected phosphine gas in Venus's atmosphere during Venera missions in the 1970s and 80s, a discovery that wouldn't make headlines until September 2020, when Earth-based telescopes confirmed its presence in the planet's cloud layers. Phosphine on Earth is almost exclusively produced by living organisms, making its detection on Venus one of the most tantalizing hints of possible extraterrestrial life in our solar system. The mystery deepened when researchers reanalyzed decades-old Venera data and found additional anomalies, unusual chemical signatures in the atmosphere's middle layers, unexplained temperature variations, and electromagnetic readings that didn't match theoretical models. Soviet atmospheric probes had detected these anomalies but dismissed them as instrumental errors or contamination. Modern analysis suggests these readings might have been humanity's first indirect contact with Venusian chemistry that defies conventional understanding. Even more puzzling are the dark patches visible in Venus's ultraviolet images, mysterious features that appear and disappear in the planet's upper atmosphere. These patches absorb UV radiation in ways that sulfuric acid clouds cannot explain, leading some scientists to speculate about aerial microorganisms surviving in Venus's more temperate atmospheric zones. NASA's recent interest in returning to Venus stems partly from these unresolved mysteries that Soviet missions first detected but couldn't fully investigate. The phosphine controversy continues to divide the scientific community, with some arguing for biological origins while others propose exotic chemistry or geological processes that Earth has never experienced. Journey to Venus Simulation The ultimate Venus mystery isn't what we found there. It's what we could become if Earth follows the same path. Modern climate scientists use Soviet Venera data as a terrifying roadmap for Earth's potential future, studying how a planet with oceans, moderate temperatures, and possibly even life transformed into the hellish world we know today. Computer models built from Venera atmospheric readings suggest that Venus experienced a runaway greenhouse effect approximately 4 billion years ago, when solar radiation gradually increased and water vapor trapped more heat, eventually boiling away the planet's oceans forever. NASA's Goddard Institute uses Venera temperature and pressure data to simulate how Venus's climate spiraled out of control, providing crucial insights for understanding Earth's own climate sensitivity. The Soviet atmospheric measurements from the 1970s and 80s remain the foundation for these models, proving that those brave missions weren't just exploration, they were prophecy. Venus's current state represents Earth's potential fate if greenhouse gas concentrations continue rising unchecked. But the story doesn't end with doom and gloom. Future missions planned by NASA, ESA, and Roscosmos will build directly on Soviet achievements, using advanced rovers, atmospheric laboratories, and sample return missions to unlock Venus's remaining secrets. The Soviets proved that Venus could be conquered. Now humanity must decide whether to learn from its lessons or repeat its mistakes. Every Venera mission was ultimately a journey through time, showing us both our planet's possible past and its potential future, written in sulfuric acid clouds and molten rock. The Soviet Union's journey to Venus proved that humanity can conquer even the most hostile worlds through determination and brilliant engineering. From Venera 1's first attempt in 1961 to the final Vega balloon missions in 1985, these pioneers gave us our first glimpse of another planet's surface, and unlocked secrets that still guide climate science today. Venus remains our most important teacher about planetary evolution and Earth's potential future. What other cosmic mysteries do you think we should explore next? Don't forget to subscribe to Simply Science, hit that bell icon for notifications, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Your curiosity drives our next adventure into the universe's greatest secrets.